Welcome. Today we shall be looking at ostomies, where we shall cover colostomies, ileostomy, and urostomy. There are three types of stomas, a colostomy, an ileostomy, and a urostomy. An ostomy is a surgically related opening in the body that allows for elimination of waste products such as stool or urine. This opening bypasses a damaged or a diseased part of the gastrointestinal tract or a urinary tract and directs this waste through the abdominal wall into an external poaching system. When looking at the types of stomas, we have a colostomy. A colostomy is a surgical procedure where a portion of a colon is brought through the abdominal wall to create a stoma. There are three types of colostomies based on the location. There is an ascending colostomy, a transverse colostomy, descending colostomy, and a sigmoid colostomy. An ascending colostomy produces a liquid to a semi-liquid stool. A transverse colostomy produces a semi-formed stool. A descending colostomy produces semi-formed to formed stool. And lastly, a sigmoid colostomy produces formed stool offering the highest potential of bile continence. Some of the indications for a colostomy include an obstruction or a perforation of the colon, for example, a colorectal cancer and diverticulitis, trauma to the colon and a congenital anomaly or an erectile malformation. The next type of stoma is known as ileostomy. An ileostomy is a surgical procedure where the ileum or the last part of the small intestine is brought through the abdominal wall to form a stoma. Some of the common indications of ileostomies include an inflammatory bowel disease, for example, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, a familial adenomatous polyposis, colon or rectal cancers that require a section of the entire colon, and lastly trauma or infection that leads to the removal of the colon. The output of an ileostomy is a liquid to semi-liquid tool with high enzyme content requiring a vigilant skin care. And the third type of a stoma is a urostomy or a urinary diversion. A urostomy is a surgical procedure to create a stoma for urinary elimination typically using a segment of a small intestine. We have two types of urostomies, an ileoconduit and a continent urostomy. An ileoconduit is the most common urinary diversion procedure where a piece of the ileum is used to redirect the urine. And in continent urostomy, an internal pouch is created to store the urine and the gland drains it using a catheter. Some of the indications for urostomy procedure are bladder cancer that requires cystectomy, a neurogenic bladder or severe incontinence, and congenital defects of the urinary tract, for example, ex extrophy of the bladder. Stomas as well can be classified to as either temporary or permanent where temporary stomas are created to allow a bowel or bladder to rest and heal after surgery or trauma. They are common in cases like anastomosis for the bowel or infections, and reverses bland ones healing occurs, usually between 6 to 12 weeks. On the other hand, a permanent stoma is required when a distal bowel or an organ is removed permanently, for example in totocolectomy and cystectomy. Some of the preoperative considerations for these patients include a stomacyte selection, where a stomacyte is marked preoperatively by an endostromo therapist. An ideal location avoids skin folds, scars, and bony prominences for an ease of care and comfort. Another consideration is a patient and family education covering the stoma location, the stoma size and appearance where we need to have an understanding that new stomas may, be, may appear red, moist and swollen, but will shrink and heal over time. And then as well, we offer psychosocial support to these 
patients and their families, where we address the concerns about an altered body image, sexual function, and daily lifestyle adjustments. Postoperatively, we perform a stoma assessment where a healthy stoma is red, moist, and produced slightly above the skin level. A pale blue or black stomas indicate an ischemia and require immediate medical attention. As well, we perform skin care postoperatively to prevent any peristoma skin breakdown by ensuring a proper appliance, fitting, and using protective barriers. A new stoma may initially appear swollen and edematous, and this is normal and should subside within 6 to 8 weeks. We need as well to monitor for complications postoperatively. There are some lifestyle adjustments that patients with stomas need to apply or implement. Some of these adjustments include dietary modifications, whereby patients who have undergone an ileostomy are advised to chew thoroughly in order to prevent blockages, avoid high fiber foods, for example popcorn, nuts, unpeeled vegetables and seeds which may cause obstructions and diarrhea. Then we advise for a fluid and electrolyte balance whereby an increased output may lead to dehydration. Therefore we encourage these patients to take at least 2 to 3 liters of fluid daily and consider an electrolyte depressment when needed. For those patients who have undergone a colostomy, there's a need for diet resumption and avoiding of trigger foods such as beans, carbonated beef fridges, and spicy foods which can cause gas or odor. Besides the dietary modifications, we as well need to consider an activity and mobility adjustments. And after recovery, most clients can return to regular activities, for example, work and exercise. However, special considerations may be needed for activities that, in, that require heavy lifting. A sexual function can be addressed openly where we encourage support groups or counseling to provide additional resources. And as well, we perform a follow-up care with healthcare providers to assess stoma functioning, managing complications, and providing ongoing education. There's another important component known as poch care or a poaching system. Clans often use poches to correct effluent. The poch system must fit snugly, leaving about an eighth of an inch clearance between the stoma and an adhesive to avoid skin irritation. This poch is secured at the bottom with a clip or a closure device to prevent any leakages, and the poch should be emptied when one third or one half full to prevent overflow and leakage. Regarding porch placement, the porches are typically changed every three to seven days, depending on the client's needs and the condition of the skin barrier. This client should change the porch during periods of bowel inactivity, for example, early mornings or a few hours after meals. A patient needs to have a constant supply to avoid running out of porches unexpectedly. Then a simple squid bottle or a soft cloth can be used to clean and remove the effluent from the sides of the porch. Irrigation is important in cases of descending and sigmoid colostomies, where it helps the clients control the effluent and establish a predictable bowel routine. You need to advise the client to irrigate at the same time each day to establish regularity and they use lukewarm water. They clean around the stoma with a lukewarm water and a mild soap to avoid harsh chemicals and use of commercial skin barrier to protect a peristomal skin. When they require an odor control, use an over-the-counter deodorizing preparations to be added on the porch or the irrigation system and avoid foods that are known to cause odor, for example garlic, onions and cabbage if odor is problematic. What are some of the complications that are experienced by patients with colostomies or ileostomy or urostomies? There is an irrigation and peristomal skin breakdown where redness, 
blistering and ulceration as seen around the stoma. The patients complain of burning, itching or pain in the peristomal area. To prevent this peristomal skin breakdown, we use a proper fitting stoma appliances with skin barriers, apply a stoma border or a barrier creams as needed, and then change podges promptly when leaking occurs. The second complication is a stoma ischemia or stoma necrosis. In stoma ischemia, we see a pale, dusky or black discoloration of the stoma and the stoma feels cold to touch, a follow door or slowing tissue and in this case you need to notify the healthcare provider immediately and this necrotic tissue may require surgical revision. Another complication is the stoma retraction where the stoma is flush with or below the skin levels, increased leakage from the stoma appliances, this difficulty in attaching the purging system due to the stoma's position and you need to use a convex purging system to improve the seal and severe cases may require surgical correction. Another complication is the stoma prolapse where the stoma protrudes significantly more than the normal. It can actually extend several inches outwards and the current reports a discomfort or difficulty in pouching. You need to protect the stoma to prevent trauma and notify the healthcare provider for evaluation. Surgical intervention may be required in severe cases. Bowel obstruction can as well occur as a complication in patients with ostomies where they will complain of abdominal pain or cramping an absence of stoma output or reduced output with nausea and vomiting, there will be abdominal distension, and in case of a suspected bowel obstruction, we encourage adequate hydration and dietary adjustments, for example, an avoiding of high vapor foods which can cause blockages, and you notify the healthcare provider immediately for evaluation if you suspect a bowel obstruction. Infection as well is a complication that is quite important for us to notice. There will be redness, swelling or warmth around the stoma, a prudent drainage or a false smelling discharge. Fever and systemic symptoms might be present if the infection is severe. And for us to prevent this one, we need to maintain a meticulous stoma care and hygiene. We treat these patients with prescribed antibiotics if infection is confirmed. Psychological and emotional complications can be noted in these patients where they experience depressions, anxiety or withdrawal from social activities, they'll be having feelings of frustration or inability to manage stomach care, and as a healthcare provider you need to provide emotional support and counseling as needed, and sometimes you need to refer these clients to ostomy support groups for peer support. And then we can a notice this patient's experiencing dehydration, which is more common in ileostomies, where they will present with a dry mucous membrane, a low urine output or a dark urine, weaknesses, fatigue or lightheadedness. And for us to prevent cases of dehydration, we need to encourage our clients to drink two to three liters of fluid daily, monitor for signs of electrolyte imbalances, for example, muscle cramps, and irregular heart rate.